Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? What's cracking, dog? What it do? This is R2 Radio. R2 Radio? With a homeboy, Roro. And your homegirl, Reese. Check it out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to R2, R2 Radio. Radio. I'm Roro, and I'm here with Risa. And today we're at Billboard Live Tokyo for our exclusive interview with Brian McKnight, um, who's here in Japan <laughs> touring. You know, so um, welcome back to Japan. I know you come here so many times. <laughs> Lots of times every year. Yeah. So we really appreciate you sitting down with us. No and so I guess we'll um, get to start an interview. So, uh, what inspired you to do music? Well, I, I come from a really musical family. Everyone on my mother's side, all my aunts, uncles, grandparents, all 21 first cousins, everybody wow. sings, everybody <laughs> plays. I'm, I'm basically the, the designated piano player for everybody. Mm -hmm. we, we sang in church, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until my brother, Claude, who sings in Take Six, mm -hmm. when they got their deal, I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's rare that you figure out how to do something until somebody that's close to you actually does it. Mm -hmm. And once that sort of inspired me to to take, because I'd already been playing music all over town. I was playing in piano bars. I was I had my own band in high school, and we play all around town. Um, but when I went to college, I started writing songs and, and publishing songs from the time I was 18, and that's when I really, you know, started actively pursuing the career that I have. Oh, I see, like you play like so many instruments. You know, like what prompted Nine. you to do that? You just was like, no, you know what? I I wasn't really allowed to go out and play by myself. Oh. And I always had access to musical instruments, so that's what I did. I was the kid that, if a if a toy said it was unbreakable, I figured out how to break it. If if there was some component or a stereo or something, I figured out how to use it. And um, if I had a guitar, I learned how to play it. That's. Uh, I see. <laughs> that's how I had everything it, yeah. you had, like I played this, played Yeah. Mm. Well, speaking of starting a band, um, I heard you went to Evans High School, same oh, high school I graduated from. <laughs> it's that's it's crazy, weird. yeah. And you know, my, you went the same time as my mother and father. I heard you would be in the hallway singing. And, yeah, that's not true. And it's not true. <laughs> I'm like, it's true. That's, a... <laughs> that's not true. Nobody that I went to school with knew that I sang. Oh, really? Because when I was in school, this was a very long time ago. It wasn't cool mm. to be. To be in chorus, which I wasn't. To be in the band, which I wasn't. Oh, really? That wow. Was, that, those were the nerds of school. You know, <laughs> they, they really were. You know, I, I was on the field. I played, mm. you know, basketball. I played football. Um, it, it made more sense to me to be on the field than playing the sport than to be on the field playing my trumpet. That was just not going to be oh, I see. the way it went down. So as I started putting out records and people that I knew from high school was like, we had no idea that you did any of this. I was like, oh, yeah, wow. I know. It just came you would have tried to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, coming from a time where, you know, you had to actually know how to play instruments, sing, produce. I mean, you couldn't just take Well, you didn't have to. There are lots of people that uh, that make records, that have made records, that that had other songwriters. There were so many great songwriting teams and producer teams um, when I got into the business. There was L.A. and Face and Jimmy and Terry Lewis. They were like the premier guys. But I I knew that when I signed that if I wasn't writing and producing my own stuff that I wouldn't have wanted to do it at all. So. Uh. Yeah. Well, um, a lot of stuff are really easy now. Like, I can just take out my iPhone yeah. and produce, you know, but you play a lot of instruments. Yeah. Do that somewhat get annoying that it's much easier now than it was no, back then? No, not really, because when my generation started making music, it was much easier than James mm -hmm. Brown's generation. So mm -hmm. every new generation has it a little bit easier with just mm -hmm. about everything. And people talk about, see, I'm a sports head, and when you look at the NFL or the NBA, Mm. Um, the game has changed, and mm. I think for those, you know, you, all, you always have those older guys saying, "Well, it was better in my day." Was, I, <laughs> I really, I really don't want to be that guy. Yeah, that is you know hating on the next generation yeah, of people yeah. just because <laughs> you know they may not have the same struggle. Or the same, you know, everybody, everybody does their thing the way they want to do it. And, 
Who am I to be the guy to be like, ah, you can't do this, whatever. You know, nah, it is I what see. it is. I see. Okay, look, well, let's talk about um, siblings that have success. You know, um, you and your brother, you got Janet and Michael, you have the Comforters. Um, you have so many people, um, but I think sometimes that can actually hurt more than it help. When you first started, you know, knowing your brother was doing music, was it harder for you to make a name for yourself? Not necessarily because my brother sings in a group. Oh, so it wasn't so like artist. it wasn't like somebody had to worry about there being another McKnight, <laughs> yes. you know. Um, mm. But I've always I'm the youngest of four boys, oh. so when I watch my brothers and they're you know not significantly older, but my brother didn't take six. He's seven years older than me. Oh, wow. So there really wasn't competition necessarily. Oh. Um, he was always there to encourage me, you know. Really, mm. plus he's in a different genre. He does Christian oh, music. Yeah. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> 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 So it then, is, so you know, is. we didn't really have to compete, uh, you know. That's pretty cool though, that two brothers are in the same, you know, business. And right. even though y'all do different music, you both, yeah. you know, you both have a name for yourself. Right. You know, I think that's pretty cool, you know. So it's been like 20 years now since you released Back at One, which is like one of your biggest hits, you know. The um, biggest, yeah. The biggest? The biggest. Uh, <laughs> you have so many. It's like, <laughs> which one? That was pretty big, yeah. <laughs> you know, can you take us back to the moment and let us know, you know, how was the writing and production process? Because I would like to know from a person that plays instruments and writes his own music. Uh, that song took about five minutes to wow. write and produce. Wow. Sometimes, you know, some songs may take five months. Sometimes I think the best ones are the ones that sort of write themselves. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've, when I didn't have any money, I had to play all the instruments. I couldn't pay anyone. And that's, mm -hmm. it wasn't like, I just want to be in control. I just, I couldn't afford it. Oh, so I could play the bass, I, I could play the guitars, I could play the drums. So I was, you know, if I'm going to spend the money, I spent the money on the studio time so I could mm -hmm. be in there and it's just me. <laughs> let me wow. get it done as quickly. I got three hours, let me get it done. <laughs> Uh, of course, back, by the time Back at One came around, I'd already, you know, produced a bunch of records on other people, and this was my third or fourth studio record at that time. Mm -hmm. um, it's a blur. You know, it took me longer to figure out what the intro was going to be, mm -hmm. to not make it too crazy, because the song is really one of the most simpler songs I've ever written. Mm -hmm. But um, I kind of knew that that was something special when I did it. So, according to that song, you know, I Heart, they have a list of the top, like, wedding songs that people request <laughs> and two of your songs is in the top 10 you know oh, i didn't know and that. so um how, how does it feel that people like request and use that song like for s something special as a wedding or anniversary you said you knew it was going to be big but did you i know didn't it was be i didn't say that, that. i did not say i oh, knew really? it was gonna be big. <laughs> what <laughs> i said was i knew it would be special knew it would be special mm. okay uh, mm -hmm. record labels and promotional people. There's so many different facets that your song has to go through from the time I finish it, by the time it's mixed and mastered. You know, if this guy's having a problem with that guy at radio, there, who knows what can happen between, just because you have a great song doesn't mean it's gonna be a hit. Yeah. You know, and that's what I didn't know. I didn't know that anything that I've ever written would be a hit. But I, I, I thought that if I liked it, if I, did the best I could with it that there might be people out there who felt the same way and could understand and relate. Mm -hmm. And if you start with that, then it's a good place to begin. Oh, I see. So um, with those songs and many other songs you wrote, how did it feel like to first like get nominated for a Grammy or even more after that? Uh, or does it even matter? You know, it, it's, it's not that it does matter or doesn't matter. It'd be a great thing to win. I've been nominated 16 times, but that's not why I create me. Hmm. Like you said, the people are using it for their weddings, using it for making their children, those kinds of things. When people walk up to me and they like my music, mm -hmm. that's all the award I'll ever need. Hmm. Wow. That and the platinum records. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <exactly. laughs> I mean, well, you've been doing music for a long time, you know. Um, how have you lasted so long in an industry that changes daily, you know? I don't know. Cause it's like you put out a song and it's like, man, it still sounds current. It still sounds current. And usually it's not always like that with, with artists. Well, it's not always like that for every record. I think I, I went through a period where I was trying to figure out how to stand on the, on, the, on, the, on the center of the line between today's technology and yesterday's music. So there were a couple of records there where I think they, they, they weren't very good because I just didn't know how to bridge that gap. And then I started getting better and better. So it's almost like I had to relearn how to make records again. Oh. And it took a couple of not so great, and I think they were great songs, but mm -hmm. the, the production was a little sketchy there because I just didn't, I had to figure it out. 
and Pro Tools and Logic just hadn't <laughs> reached where it needed to just yet. So I had to, you know, I was, and I was doing it by myself. So it just took a second. But I think that's good because you have to grow. Hmm. Without that growth, uh, when we're talking about longevity and staying power, I think you have to grow. And sometimes hmm. those growing pains take you to peaks and valleys. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, um, let's talk about your new music. You have a new album that's coming out called Bedtime Story. Can you tell us the inspiration behind that? So, I made a record here that's 60 minutes of lovemaking music. Oh. And I did that while well, people have been asking me for it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was, in a world where people don't do, use CDs anymore, I wanted, mm -hmm. to give you yeah. six, I wanted to give you 60 minutes. Yeah, I mean, you might only need seven. I don't know what your personal life is like. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm giving you 60. You don't have to tell Alexa to turn to another playlist or Siri. You can just press play and you're yeah. good. Mm -hmm. You're good. Yeah. So speaking, you say you put um, 60 minutes on the album. Now it's so much easier. You know, you, like you said, Alexa, you can go Apple Music, right. all those streams. How do you feel about, you know, streaming platforms, you know, versus <laughs> when you first, you know, you was releasing CDs and then yeah. before that it was vinyls. You had different artworks and everything I, yeah. was pretty cool. I would say that more people are listening to music than ever. Oh, wow. But when it's free, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty understandable yeah. that they would, wouldn't it? <laughs> so it's, it's a great thing for the consumer. Mm -hmm. It's not the best thing in the world for the writers mm -hmm. and the artists. I would say that. So, um, we talked about music production. Um, now, technology, you got a new app. It's called Video Request Line. Video Request Line. Line. It's VRL. Mm -hmm. And uh, five years ago, I was getting all these requests on Instagram for, pe for me to send videos to people. You know, say happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Can you sing? Mm -hmm. So, I put it up for sale on a web, make, created a website with my partners and put it up and did like 150 of them on Christmas. Wow. For, you know, a price that was affordable. So it, and I realized that there's a demand mm -hmm. and I created an app and the app is out and now it's just a matter of getting other artists to understand that we should all look at ourselves like we're all Pepsi or Coke. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That we shouldn't do anything for free, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's interesting. It's, it's been an eye opener on a lot of levels, but you know, sometimes you have to take these social experiments and figure out what the next thing is going to be. Oh, I think that's pretty cool. So for example, if I wanted you to make a video for my mom or her birthday or something. Right. Um, so you download the app mm -hmm. and then you go to my page and it shows you the menu of things that I offer, you know, mm. and all the videos. And then it comes right to my phone here and I get a notification that I've got an order. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I have orders that are pending right now. Oh, and wow. you, have the, you have the date where you they want it by and you know what they want you to say because mm -hmm. really they're they're paying for you to say the person's name or to make it personal mm -hmm. and um, it's all right there for you and then you like if i press accept i know you guys can't see this but uh, <laughs> <laughs> press record video now and then i have a teleprompter mm -hmm. wow. and it's a, it's just a selfie yeah, video yeah. that you can do start you can it's it's pretty amazing the technology mm -hmm. that the way we did it it took five years five years wow. to make but it's pretty awesome so have you ever gotten any like crazy requests? On no, most people, you know, are pretty cool about it. But you have the option to reject it. If it's oh, too crazy, okay. you can accept it or you can reject it. So we thought of everything because, you know, when some of the females who are on there, you, who knows what kind of request they might get. And you can choose, you can choose to do it or you can choose to reject it. You know? Okay. Uh, so you're trying to get more artists on it? Yeah, I created it so that to be the buffer between the fans and the artists, because you advertise it right to your social media. So mm -hmm. occasionally, like for Mother's Day, I, I put up another commercial saying, hey, you know, something mm -hmm. great for your mom. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. So you, it's interactive, but you also have to do some work mm -hmm. where that's concerned. And, you know, I think some people sometimes get concerned that they're that they're hustling a little too too oh, much. Yeah. Or, or that, that, or that it, like, it looks, yeah. But mm -hmm. it's really, to me, I'm, I've created a service for people that they love. The, the fans mm -hmm. really, really enjoy. And they love the fact, all the feedback I get, is that they can't believe that I took the time out mm -hmm. to do that for them. So yeah, it's, it's about changing the paradigm, changing the way people think about themselves. You want to know, it's a global, right? The apps work. What's that? It, she says, is it global? The yeah, app? Cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can order from Absolutely. Japan. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, trans, it's, trans, it's translated everything. Yeah, that's cool, that's oh, that's cool. really yeah. cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, after being nominated so many times, releasing 19 albums and selling over 30 to 35 million albums worldwide, wow. what keeps you going? The songs. 
you know, I still have yet to write my greatest song. Mm. Oh, really? So I go back in the lab and I, I, I try to come up with something else, something else that people can can relate to. It's another story, because I write about the same thing. It's not it's nothing new under the sun, but I'm still trying to come up with that perfect chord change and that perfect melody and that perfect lyric. Um, again, that's it. Oh, I see. So, oh, thank you, that was my part of the interview. Now, um, Lisa, <laughs> question is um, you've been in Japan so many times, so like, what do you like about it? Uh, every place that I visit, mm -hmm. although they're scenically they're beautiful, you know, there's a whole, you look outside, it's amazing. It's always mm -hmm. the people. Mm -hmm. Being, getting an opportunity to learn about other cultures, getting an opportunity to see how other people live, uh, getting an opportunity to spend time with people who are so far away that you have no idea that they even figured out who you are, but mm. they're here. Mm. It's always mind boggling to me even after all this time. So mm. I, that's the, the, the folks here, they're, they're so receptive and when they like you, they love you. Mm. Um, I see the same people every year that come to shows, they come to every show. Mm. And it's, you know, it's almost like coming back and playing for your family again, it's really amazing. That's good, that's good. That's really good. How about um, Japanese food, did you try anything? Yeah, well, it's interesting. My favorite French restaurant in the whole wide world is here in Tokyo. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> is that weird? Yeah. Yeah. Better than anything I've had in France is right here in Tokyo. Wow. Actually, not That's weird because a lot of people, they say when they come to Japan, they like how, you know, the um, the food here, they nail it. Like Indian oh, food, yeah. they do really good. They do it, man. This restaurant, it's, it's no bigger than this room. Oh, really? Oh. It is. Um, you can't get in. You cannot get in unless you know somebody because it's booked up months in advance. But if you do get in there, man, mm. it's crazy. Wow. What about the any like culture shock moments when you come? When you first came? First time. When I first yeah. came? Yeah. Uh, the audiences are a little different. They actually listen. There's, it's not rah rah like yeah, other places. Yeah, it's really, you know? really serious listening. They're the serious <laughs> listeners. So when you're expecting that kind of feedback from the audience that you would get at home, or you mm. get in London, mm. or the UK, or France, mm. or someplace, you really have to. And they're also very astute listeners. Mm. So they know your songs better than you know them. They know when you make mistakes. They know when it's not <laughs> good. They know when it's not good. You know, so mm. they they're expecting, mm. especially based on the price they have to pay, that they're going to get a great show. Mm. I like that person. That's good. Thank you. Um, can you give a final message to the listeners and viewers? I, I, I would just say, as I always say, that um, I am so grateful to to have the, the opportunity to live my dream every day, and it's only possible because of the folks that patronize me. And I just say thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for for being out there and listening to my music and, and loving it and, and coming to share um, with me in these shows and in my life and on Instagram and on Twitter and everywhere. It's, it's, it's truly amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So that concludes our interview. Everybody, give it up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Awesome.